Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of basic probability. Uh, again, I'm covering multiplication rule, addition rule, uh, conditional probability, the complement of an event, and all using the rolling of a die as our example. Um, if you haven't watched part one yet, you probably want to stop now and go and watch the part one video. Um, we did set up the events in that video, okay? And the event A was rolling an even number, event B was rolling an eight, and event C is rolling a square number. Okay, and we do have those individual probabilities there. Moving on to the next one here, we have find the probability of A and C. Okay, um, this one, you could probably use logic and you, you would get the answer pretty quickly. But I want to teach you the multiplication rule using a simple example like this so that you can apply the rule in more complicated problems. And that's just good practice for yourself as well um, to just use the formulas as well as solving it logically and just make sure your answers are the same and it helps you to memorize these rules for the more complicated problems. So here's our general multiplication rule. Okay, so I'll write it out here for you. Just using A and B just so it's general, okay? And you can notice I actually wrote the word and, which is fine. You'll see that some professors do that as well. Or you can just do the intersection sign, whatever you feel comfortable with. So the probability of A and B is the probability of A given B times the probability of B. I could also write this as the probability of A and B equals the probability of B given A times the probability of A. Since it doesn't matter if I put A and B or B and A, okay, the order does not matter here. So it's more about what information do I have over here? What is easier for me to figure out? A lot of times you'll just start with one and if you can't do it, then you can switch to the other. The key is to not get these messed up. You have to make sure that the second variable here, okay, the given information, the given outcome, is the same as the single probability that goes over here, the individual one, okay? So just make sure the second one is the one that's repeated. Okay, so you can see here the second one was A, so we have to make sure to put an A there. Okay, so I'll just erase that quickly. And we'll start with this problem. Okay, so again, we like to read our problem aloud in words. So we want to find the probability of rolling an even number and rolling a square number. Okay, um, I'm going to write out the formula. Okay, so the probability of A and C is the probability of A given C times the probability of C, okay? So, probability of A given C, I'll just start with that one all by itself. This is a conditional probability. We have the second event in the bracket C as given. So we think of this as reducing our sample space for this one probability to outcomes that satisfy C. Okay, so that's now our new denominator. That's our new sample space is everything in C. The outcomes that satisfy C are ones that are square, so just the numbers 1 and 4. Okay, so there were only two outcomes that satisfied C. So I'm just going to put that 2 on my denominator so I remember that I'm only dividing by 2 here. Now we want outcomes that satisfy A, but out of these outcomes that satisfy C. Okay, so you have this new smaller sample space that you're looking at and you have to say is there anything that satisfies A within that smaller sample. Well, we had one and four, right, belonging, these are the numbers one and four here, okay? Those are the outcomes that satisfied C. And we just say which ones are even, because that's what the event A is, even numbers. Well, the only one that's even is four, so there's only one outcome, okay, that's even out of the two possible outcomes of C. So the probability of A given C is simply one half. We also had that individual probability that we had already solved for, the probability of C, okay? 
which was 2 out of 6 or 1 out of 3, right? Because the 1 and 4 out of all the possible ones. So now we just multiply those two numbers together. So we have 1 half times 1 third gives us 1 sixth. Now I'm going to use some logic to get the exact same answer very quickly for you here. Okay? So, looking at probability of A and C, this means that we need outcomes that satisfy both A and C. So we need any outcomes that are both square and even. Well, the only number that satisfies that is the number 4. Okay, so we only have one outcome that satisfies this out of a possible six outcomes of our total sample space. So one out of six is the answer, which is what we had just calculated using the formula. Okay, Okay, so I have to cut the video short here just to fit in with uh, YouTube. So if you can continue on to the next video, I will do the next part of the question.